Puedes Jugar Boxeo es presentado por Seller en los puños de los campeones desde 1930. Gracias, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Uh, I want to introduce you, te quiero presentar para que la gente sepa que viene un peleador de sangre mexicana. There's some Mexican uh, blood fighter that is coming. Uh, thanks for taking the time. No, well, thank you. Th thank you for having me on. And, you know, I appreciate your time and you uh, ha having me on your, your, your show. Well, le let me start with this. Uh, what are your dreams? your weight class vision, what is the next step for you in your career? Explain me everything so in order the people knows you and, of course, start they, they're going to start following you. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm an amateur. I'm soon to make my professional debut. Uh, my weight class is Peso, uh, fe featherweight, Peso Pluma, 126 pounds. And uh, my dreams are to become a world champion, you know, just like, just like, all, just like every other fighter. Uh, my dream is to become a world champion, undis undisputed, and uh, I know that I can get there. Uh, I trust my work ethic. Uh, I believe in God. I trust in God, and um, yeah, you know that's that's those, those are my dreams and those are my goals. Beautiful. So the boxing is in the DNA of your family, right? Explain. Oh yeah. Explain. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's a lot, it's a funny story. Um, my 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 dad box my my father. Nico también se llama. Uh, he boxed Your father amateur. Is yeah, Nico, 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 uh, Nicolas Robledo Jr. Nico segundo y yo eres, tú eres Nico tercero. Sí. So your father so, used, to, used to fight. Yes, yes. My, 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 my father used to fight at amateur and uh, he fought professional as well. Um, uh, he fought he, he, his professional career. Uh, you know, the, there's some things that, that happened. You know, there's some choices that he made. Uh, in which you know he couldn't continue his career, uh, but um, you know he grew up with it. You know he grew up around it. Uh, he actually fought a couple of times here at the Forum and at the Anaheim Pond. And uh, my brother now it goes back to my brother. My brother, his name is Gabriel, okay. Gabriel Robledo. Uh, he he fought amateur as well. Uh, he fought amateur as well. Uh, he won a he's a two time uh, ringside world tournament uh, champion. Nice. Uh, he fought at 108 pounds. About uh, 108 pounds, and uh, he he also qualified for the Olympic trials like myself. So uh, you know, and at by that time I was probably eight years old, seven years old, and just you know me being around him and my dad. You know, at that time uh, I I wasn't boxing. You know, I wasn't competing. Um, I, I was actually a baseball player. I I, oh. I played baseball. Yeah, I was actually a, a baseball player. But uh, just you know, my my dad trained me here and there when I was younger. You know, just to defend myself. Um, you know, when we, you know, when I was in school, you know, my dad always said, you know, boys are going to be boys and, you know, you're going to have to learn how to, how to defend yourself growing up. So, uh, so in the summers, you know, I'll spend my summer in the gym with my dad and my brother and, you know, my dad will train me just with the mitts, you know, nothing, you know, nothing too serious, nothing, uh, nothing, uh, competitive wise, but, uh, you know, I, I was always around it. Uh, I seen it. And, uh, at, by that time, my, my, my brother was taking it serious. And, uh, you know, I would travel with them to tournaments and to national tournaments. Um, you know, I would see the whole process, the, 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 the fighting, uh, the make, making the weight every day. And, you know, just the sacrifices, you know, of, of a boxer and what it, oh, yeah. you know, what it, what it takes, you know, to take it to the next level. And um, so, you know, my brother did that. My, my brother had a, a, a really good amateur career, uh, but he just, uh, he just, you know, he just went another way. He, you know, he just chose a different path. But uh, me, me being around him, my brother qualified for the 2012 uh, Olympic trials in Colorado Springs. So wow. uh, I remember, I remember that trip. You know, I, I remember that we opened a training camp in Big Bear because of the altitude. Uh, the out the altitude in Colorado is a, a way higher, you know, than the altitude here in California. So way you know, I remember, yeah, I remember, I remember uh, my dad and the team opened camp in Big Bear to get my brother ready for the tournament. And uh, my brother made it to the semifinals and he lost by one point to a fighter by the name of Louis Bird. At that time, he probably had like 200 or 200 and something amateur fights and probably like two losses. But um, wow. but my brother made it all the way to the semifinals. Uh, he lost by a point. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, that's just how it is. And from there, my brother just, uh, he just didn't, uh, he didn't continue his career in the professionals. Like I said, you know, he chose a different path. 
Um, but, you know, me growing up, uh, I like I said, I've been around it. And, you know, by that time, you know, my dad was training me just to stay busy, to, you know, stay in shape because I played sports. And my dad was training also other fighters at the time, too. He trained Will Tomlinson, which who was a, who was a, who was a IBO world champion. Uh, he was training a the the a heavyweight uh, Russian heavyweight Dmitry Kudryashov, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, he traded uh, Enrique Quevedo and Cuate and Cuate Quevedo uh, from uh, where they from there? Uh, from from uh, from Sinaloa. So you know, and at the gym in the uh, uh, it was a gym in Carson. Uh, uh, my dad and Manny Robles, you know, just seeing him and Manny Robles on all of his fighters. You know, I just always been around it. You know, I've always seen it, and I just train just to, you know, learn how to de- learn how to defend myself. Because in elementary school, I was, you know, I was small. You know, I was I wasn't tall, so I would always get picked on because of my height. And uh, you know, boys, you know, boys are gonna be boys. So my dad, like I said, my dad just defended. You know, taught me to defend myself. But like I said, it was nothing serious. Um, but it came to an age where I was in high school. I just started boxing four years ago. I started boxing four uh four years ago. Okay. Uh, when I was in the uh, when I was like the towards the middle of eleventh grade, the middle of eleventh grade, um, you know, I picked up a pair of gloves and I told my dad, you know, I want to I want to do this, you know, for reals. And this was during the this was the you know before the pandemic, and uh, like I said, I was I was always a baseball player. Uh, I got uh to throughout high school, I played baseball, I played travel ball when I was a kid, um, but uh, throughout high school, you know, I played puro puro baseball. And uh, I ended up getting two scholarships uh, to go to to go to universities and play baseball. Uh, I went to I got a scholarship to go to Ohio State and New York uh, and NYU. Wow, it was, it's a it's a university in New, in New York. I know, but at that time I my focus was on boxing. Uh, I told my dad that I want to do boxing and I'm and I'm gonna do it. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I I know that if I say that I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, and I'm willing to make the sacrifices. And I'm willing to, you know, sacrifice because, you know, people just see boxing, you know, two fighters fighting on TV and they see someone get knocked out. But, you know, being in training camp, this, this past training camp with uh, with the WBO world champion, Rafael, is, Rafael Divino Espinosa. Yeah, yeah. Let, know, let, let me uh, ask you this. Uh, you uh, you had the opportunity to 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 play, to to train with uh, Rafael Espinosa as a sparring partner. Explain. Me. Yeah. Oh, I mean, so I, I'll tell you this. Uh, it's my first time in Wala. Uh, it's my first. Uh, it was my first time going to Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Wow. And okay. um, where your family is from? Uh, my family is from Guadalajara, Jalisco. Uh, oh my God! Un, what experience? Yeah, what an experience. So, uh, un uh, pueblo se llama Sap- Saputitan de Hidalgo, Jalisco. I know. My, my mother was from Guadalajara, but I know Jalisco. Oh, see, sí, see. Sí. So, um, you know, it was a. Uh, It was a really, it was, it was a good experience, you know, uh, first, let me talk about Guadalajara, amazing people, uh, genuine people, uh, for as a kid from Los Angeles, going over there, uh, the people treated me well, they welcomed me, uh, La Familia de Rafa, Wow. they, they, they welcomed me with op- open arms, the people, like I said, uh, beautiful, Mexico is just beautiful, like I said, it was my first time going, and, you know, I'm, I'm willing to go and retire over there, you of know, course. Of yeah, course, and, uh, not only the people, that, but, but the food. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the food too. Uh, the food, yeah, yeah, the food too. The, the, so, the so, diet. so, so, share with me and the people from Robert Square Box Sale, uh, the experience to to be the sparring partner uh, with one of the most dangerous 126 pounders. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, is for me, it could be one of the best champions of the world, yeah. Mexico. Well, I'll tell you this. You know, he's a, he's a champion for a reason. You know, there's a lot of things that come with the champion and there's a lot of behind the scenes yeah. uh, things that, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't get to see. You know, they just see, you know, him fighting. They see him winning the title. Um, But me, it was a good experience for me as well. You know, it was a privilege and it was an honor, you know, to be a part of the training camp and to be one of his sparring partners. And, um, you know, the the first week we got there, the, uh, the altitude in uh, Guadalajara, you know, it got to me. You know, I, I felt it the first day I was there. Uh, I, I actually landed off of the plane, you know, uh, with uh, with uh, with, the, with the fever. Uh, I landed with the fever, and it was on a Sunday. And uh, he sparred Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And uh, you know, he got up at four forty-five in the morning every day. Uh, from four from four from four forty-five to probably like six forty-five was just brutal conditioning, running, 
um, you just it was just our conditioning every day in the morning, and uh, we came back and then the gym was at twelve, and then from like twelve to two thirty, twelve to you know two forty five was boxing puro boxeo, wow, and then from and then from six or seven to eight nine it was strengthening it was just strength training, so you know I was doing I was doing three uh, three sessions with him. And uh, there's there's a lot. I'll tell you this. There's 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 a lot that I learned when when it when you know when it came, you know, to uh, training with him. Uh, just his uh, his 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 work his work ethic and just you know doing the what I realized of a champion is that a champion does it and a champion works when he's tired. A champion works when he doesn't want to when he's hurt. Or a champion works when you know when you know when when the odds are all against him. You know the champion's gonna do it and the champion's disciplined. I feel like that's the main thing with Rafa and why he's got to where he's at because one, he has an amazing family behind him. He has a beautiful family that supports him. Yeah. You know, his 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 dad, Don 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 Rafa, you know, supports him really well. All of his sisters, you know, I feel like that's you know, I feel like that's a, a lot that's a big plus, you know, in a boxer's career is that is the support of your wife, you know, your family. And two, another thing is that he's his work ethic, he just works really hard. He's very, 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 very disciplined to when his meals, to the certain times he does everything. Everything is on a set. Uh, everything is on a set schedule, and he's gonna do it, and he's gonna get it done, no matter what's in his way or how he's gonna do it. He's just he, he's he's gonna get it done. Let, let me ask you this: How can you define Rafael Divino Espinosa as a fighter and as a human being? Human being. Well, I not only see a champion in the ring, but he's a champion outside outside of the ring. You know. Yeah, that's correct. There's times where we're running uh, allá en La Parque and uh, there's people that come up to him and, you know, they want to take a picture with them. He, I have never seen once him, like, the way you see him, I'll tell the people that don't know him, the way you see him on TV and in the interviews and singing and all that stuff is exactly the way he is when he's, when there's, when there's no cameras around, when there's no nothing. And, oh, it's, you know, it's, there's, it's a real, yeah, it's, yeah he, he, uh, what, what you see is what you get. Not right, <clears throat> and he's also a people's champion. You know, every everyone loves him. When 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 one time we uh, on on the weekend, I think it was on a Saturday, we went to go run at La Estadio Akron, allá en Guadalajara. Oh, las Chivas. El, el... Yeah, arriba las Chivas. A huevo. <laughs> and and uh, you know there was the bikers on uh, uh cyclists, and you know everybody yeah. was saying like campeón, campeón, and you oh. know it was just a, you know it was just a, it was just a good feeling. You know, not. I mean, if if I if it was a good feeling for me, I can just imagine him. And you know, we're running, and you know, he'll like stop, and you know, he'll like take a picture. You know, like I said, he's a he's he's for the people. Uh, yeah. He's not like uh, because I know I know that there's and I know that there's some people that when the cameras are on them, you know, they they act a certain way or they want to do. You know, there's good deeds that you know that he that he does that a lot of people don't see. You know, like he he uh when we were over there, he went to like a shelter and helped the help helped kids help kids with like you know special needs and Beauty. you know brought boil to them but like i said you know he he's he's a he's a he's somebody that does it from his heart he's not he's not somebody that does it for you know the media or for the cameras just to make him look good no nah, you know he, he just he does it he's him yeah he's not that guy no 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 yeah okay so now let's go for this because uh you uh it happens that you are the sparring partner for even Espinosa, you went to Guadalajara, great experience. You you do describe perfectly how uh, Divino Espinosa is a, as a human being, as a fighter as well. But uh, what is your opinion about the words of uh, Robesi Ramirez uh, saying that Rafael is afraid to, to take the rematch? And not only this, the Cuban audience and the Cuban commentators or analysts, let me do this, they say that Rafael Espinosa is afraid to fight against uh, Robesi Ramirez, Ramirez in the rematch. What do you think about it? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, for those that don't know, boxing is a business. Uh, boxing is a business, oh. and, you know, you a boxer only has so much control in, in his hands, you know, to, to, you know, to do what he wants to do. At the end of the day, it's, uh, it's up to the promoters. It's up to the team, and everybody needs to come to an, an agreement. But I will, I, I will tell you this. Rafael Espinosa isn't scared of anyone. He, he he he's not scared of anyone. He he's willing to take on the challenges head on. Um, he's willing to take on the you know the biggest fights that there is. Um, you know we're you know like I said you know when we're running in the morning, you know he was he would just repeat himself like you know I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna I'm gonna be undisputed. I'm gonna 
be in a way like he when he what he says what he says to his mind he does it but i will tell you this rafael divino espinosa he i don't think he's 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 scared of nothing of course nobody no nobody and and what, what do you think about uh, this uh, uh weight class division it's it's like a mexican weight class division we, of course we have nick ball but other than that there's uh benado lopez uh, of course ray vargas and divino espinosa if you uh, need to to put a list uh, with the best 126 pounder which one you choose oh that's a that's a well right now the best 26 pounder in the world yeah rafael is rafael divino espinosa in the second and the second one i have to go with ray vargas and, and then the third course. is venado now and then and nick then, ball. And, and then nick ball yes well sounds great because of course uh, it, it's a great experience. So uh, now let's talk about the fight because again, you you uh, it happens that you had the opportunity to be the sparring partner for Rafael Divino Espinosa, and you were there in the fight. I, I I saw you there with your father. And do you believe it was one of the greatest uh, nights for Divino Espinosa? Because I truly believe it was close to perfect performance. You know what I mean? The, the, I let agree. Me, let, me, let me bring this moment. When I, Divino throw the, the right hand, uh, Divino go like this, and then boom, at the very moment, the uppercut. It was perfect. Perfect time. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this. Everything that everything that we worked on in training camp, like I said, you know, uh, Rafael uh, added, you know, a few more coaches to the to the team, uh, uh, including my dad. Of course. Uh, every, every everything that we worked on during uh, training camp, uh, he executed it in the fight, and I feel like he made it. He made it look a little bit too. He made it look too easy. That's um, that's he, the, that's what I'm telling you. It looks like ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, he, he made it look too easy, and uh, there was there was four coaches in his corner, and you know, I I'm somebody that's over you know quality over quantity. But uh, I'd say with the four yeah. coaches we had were very quality coaches. We had uh, Manny Robles. We had Sendai Tanaka. We had my dad, Nick, Nick, Nick Robledo Jr. And then we had uh, Hugo Ramos. Uh, you know, just th those are just four, you know, those are just what four a, quality coaches. What a corner. Yeah, you know, I, I I feel like that was that was one of the strongest things uh coming into this fight was that he had a uh, he had a corner that had a lot of experience. And um, you know, there's fighters, you know, he he beat a rank number two contender at uh in 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 the WBO and he made it look easy. So, uh, you know, like I said, I just go back to when, what I was saying. You know, Ra Rafa listens to everything in training camp. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't take no shortcuts. You know, what whatever the coaches tell him to do, he does it and and more. So, yeah. uh, yeah, so yeah. I feel like, like I said, you know, I was right there ringside, and uh, uh, I was I was sitting next to you know uh, this uh, this uh, this young lady from ES from ESPN knockout, and she was just telling me. Um, I believe she. I believe she's from Japan. She she told me her name, but I forgot her name. But uh, she, I remember her telling me like he's making this fight look too easy, and um, she you know she ex she expected it to go towards the later rounds in the ninth and tenth round, and you know that's where he would break him out. He'll break him apart. But I mean the fourth round in the you know in a world title fight, you know, you know it's it's rare to see that. I think he just made it look a little bit too easy. And uh, that's why I'm confident that, you know, Rafael can go against, you know, anybody in, you know, in the 126 pound division. Definitely. Let, 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 me, let me return to your career. So what is the moment that you are living now? Uh, what is, are the goals for a professional <laughs> career? What are you living now? This is your third trip. Well, so like, what am I living right now? Yeah, well, what is the moment for you? Uh, you are willing to to go to to the pro really really quick, or you feel good in in amateur? Uh, uh, Define so, your moment. So right right now the the, the plan is uh, to turn professional. I feel like uh, I'm I'm 21 years old. Uh, the, the 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 plan is to turn professional. You know, I had a little bit of a late start, but uh, uh, from my accomplishments, from what I won in the amateurs, I'm a two time state champion. Uh, nice. I'm a national I'm a national silver medalist. Um, uh, I'm also a national, I'm, I'm a national champion as well. I was ranked number two at 119 pounds in 2019. I was ranked number three at 125 pounds, uh, this, this past uh, year. 
And so, you know, I feel like my, my, uh, like I said, my, uh, my, 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 alc my alkylates, uh, you know, are, are, you know, are there. And, you know, I think it's time, you know, we don't want to wait too long. Uh, but I feel like right now is the perfect time, you know, my team and my coach, <clears throat> uh, my, excuse me, uh, my, my team and my coach prepared me, you know, for, you know, for, for this time. And, you know, I'm ready to take the next step. And through, throughout my amateur career, you know, I've been through, you know, three world, uh, world uh, champion training camps as their Spartan partners. Uh, I, uh, one of the notable names is Junto Nakatani. Oh, um, he's, he's one of the, my favorite fighters. He needs to be in the pound for pound list for sure. Not, yeah, the, he's very. He's, taking, yeah. he's not putting attention on this great fighter, but for me, he's super dangerous. Yeah, he, I mean, I I agree. You know, his his technique and uh, you know, just you know, just you know, just being just being a part of those training camps and just getting those experiences. Um, you know, it's just you know, it's just it's experience is something that you you can buy, and uh, so that was one of him, uh, one of the names, and then we sparred the uh, Robson. Uh, I believe he's also a top ranked fighter. I believe he's fighting. I believe he's fighting next week or in two weeks. I think he's fighting uh, Oshaki Foster. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's fighting Oshaki Foster. And then Rafael Espinosa is my is my third world uh, world champion uh, training camp. And then uh, we also sparred Saul Sa Saul Sanchez, uh, who's uh, who was a world title contender. I think he fought this past year uh, against Andrew Maloney. I know who uh, he is. Yeah. I know who this yeah. guy is. Uh, yeah. Well, so, uh, you have a nickname. You see, uh, my nickname is El Nicolas El Jaguar Robledo. I love El, El Jaguar uh, El Jaguar. Uh, I love this this uh, nickname. And well, tell to the people again, not only your dreams, but but your weight class and everything in your social media, because I would love the, to invite the people to follow you because you are nice, nice, nicer than I believe. I know your father is a super nice uh, guy. It's a friend, but you have something like super humble, but at the very same moment, dangerous guy, you know, like humble, yeah. maybe outside of the ring, but you can be a jaguar yeah. in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my, my, You know, my dad, since I was a kid, my dad embedded to me, you know, to be res respectful, get, give everybody the mutual respect. But when it's time to go in the ring, you know, you got to flip the switch and, you know, you got to, you got to hurt, you got to hurt people. Hay un dicho en español, let, let me, your father, maybe later he can translate to you. Hay que ser implacable en el combate y generoso en la victoria. Your father is going to translate later. But, so, eh, two more things. And I promise that I'm going to follow your career. Uh, what is your opinion about this Benavides against Alexander Bozic? Because the people, maybe the people that don't understand boxing, they are mentioning that Canelo is afraid to fight against Benavides. And I disagree. I believe that Canelo is not afraid of no one. But uh, describe the, the performance of Benavides in the last fight, please. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, I feel like it was a good performance, you know, uh, you know, he, he went, went in there and he did his job and, you know, he won it, you know, he doesn't matter how he won. He just, he just got it done. Um, you know, like he, like he said in the post fight interview, you know, this is his first time moving up. Um, you know, it, it, it you know, it, it'll take some time, you know, to, you know, to, to adjust to his body, his weight, he'll probably oh, yeah. more muscles he moves up, you know, but, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I feel like it was a good performance by him. Um, I don't feel like, uh, I don't feel like Canelo. Oh, I'm sorry, somebody's calling. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't feel like Canelo's afraid of anybody. Um, you know, to get to where he's at, uh, un, you know, multi multiple weight class, you know, world champion. Uh, you know, I don't think he's afraid. Uh, as to to nobody. Um, you know, Mexicans, you know, are the first to step up. You know, when when it comes to to anything, guerra, uh, anything. And, uh, you know, I feel like it'll be a great fight for the fans. Um, but I feel like Benavides did good. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm willing and I'm hopeful, you know, to see a kind of little ben Benavides fight. But like I said, you know, you know, there's a lot of things that go on behind that, you know, that us fans don't don't see. Uh, what about Gervonta Davis? Uh, in the beginning of his career, I don't like that Gervonta, not disciplined at all, blah, blah, blah. But then... 
uh, is showing me that he's one of the greatest boxers ever. Yeah. What's your opinion about your opinion about Gervonta Davis? Uh, again, you know he's a he's a he's another quality fighter. Um, yeah. he's a uh like goes back to what you said. Like in the beginning of his career, you know we're young. Uh, you know he was young. You know, I think like over time, you know, boxing's a sport that you know that you know that mature that matures you early, and um, you know, uh, but from a fighting standpoint, I feel like he's probably one of the best, uh, right, right, you know, right now. And you know, I'm I'm willing and I'm excited to see on you know as you know what's next, you know, in in his career and uh, yeah. Canelo Benavides, if this fight happens, uh. How can you describe the fight? Who's gonna win, Canelo or Benavides? Ooh, it's a it's a good question. Like, uh, honestly, to be honest with you, I feel like the fans are gonna win. The, the I feel like the fans are the real winners. Oh yeah. Uh, it does. It doesn't matter, you know, who wins in the fight. Uh, but I feel like the the people that are really gonna win are, are you know are the fans because that's a fight that it's probably one of the biggest fights that pe that people want to see right now. Other you know than Spence and Crawford and you know they already fought. Yeah. But, uh, And same with Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, but I feel like this fight is what everybody, you know, what every everybody wants to see. Uh, so you know, I I feel like if I if that fight happens, I feel like I'm winning because I'm gonna watch it. Of course. So so do you believe uh, when you mentioned Ryan Garcia? Do you believe that people needs to crucify Ryan Garcia or Ryan Garcia needs help? Because I understand and I know Ryan Garcia since forever. I started following his career since Tijuana. But that being said, uh, the people are killing Ryan Garcia. And I believe that it's not a bad person. And the problem is that the all the team next to him, you know, the entourage, they are saying everything. Yes, Ryan. Yes, Ryan. Yes, Ryan. You're doing good. And they need people who can tell him, no, you're doing wrong. So yeah. I don't believe they need to crucify. Uh, Ryan, but they need to help Ryan Garcia. He is in a deep shed. Sorry for the, my bad English. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, when you know, when it comes to Ryan Garcia, you know, uh, he, he's a good fighter. You know, he, uh, he yeah. he's a he's a he. You know, he entertains. You know what he what he did this past fight to you know the in, on the build up of the Devin Haney Ryan Garcia fight. Uh, I feel like he sold the fight really well and. And boxing numbers, you know, numbers talk. Boom. And and uh, I don't know if it was like a, I don't know if it was like a publicity stunt to, to sell the fight, or I don't know if something's really wrong with them. But you know, it could be either way. Uh, if something is wrong with them, you know, like you said, you know, he needs a team that's gonna, you know, help him and tell him, you know, straight up, you know, the things that he needs to work on. But if it's a publicity stunt, then you know, it's an, it's another thing. You know, it's just, it's just a, it's just a different way of, of selling and marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if someday you don't want to use the uh, Jaguar or the Jaguar, you can be Nico El Jalisco Robledo. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jalisco, all the way. Puro, puro Mexico. I, I love that nickname if you want to use it. Just it comes to my mind that you can be El Jalisco Robledo. So, well, w what else you want to add? What, what do you want to say just to close this interview? And again, uh, thank you for the time. No, I, you know, I, I just want to thank you for having me. Uh, I want to thank you for having me and thank you, you know, for, you know, greeting me with the utmost respect uh, this past weekend in, in Vegas and, you know, uh, treating and welcoming my father and, you know, talking to us as well. Um, we we followed you, uh, me and prior to this, you know, my dad and I, you know, followed you, you know, we watched your podcast you. um, and, uh, you know, just seeing you and, you know, just seeing everybody was great. And um, like I said, you know, just thank you and, you know, that's it. You know, the people, uh, it's always talking trash. I mean, there are so many people that loves me, but I have so many haters and they say that I'm a motherfucker, an arrogant guy and blah, blah, blah. So I appreciate your kind words mentioned and telling the people that Ernesto Amador is a guy who goes to the restroom like any other in the morning. And I'm yeah. really glad. I mean, I'm busy. Always busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Fucking busy. But... It doesn't mean that I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, you know, what I mean, you just, it's, it's just working, man. You know, you just you, you yeah. just gotta work. That's it. That's it. But thanks, thanks for your kind words. And uh, I'm gonna, in uh, español, te voy a comprometer. Uh, I need to push this. You need to learn Spanish 
as soon as possible. Because, you know, uh, I don't know if you understand these numbers, but I want to share this with you. In this country, USA, there are 55 millions of Mexicans, first, second, or third generation, like you. We built every single year 420 billions. So we are a country inside of another country. We love USA, of course, as a Mexican Americans, we love USA, but we need to remember there are so many Mexicans that they are suffering, that they need something like boxing because boxing is a religion for Mexicans. And guess what? From every 10 people, mi querido Nico, el Jalisco, el Jaguar Robledo, from every 10 people watching boxing, guess what? 8.5 are Mexicans. Again, one, first, second, or third generation. And the boxing is not taking care of this market. No, no other than me, they are taking care of this market, and you know that. So yeah. please don't forget your raza and try to Never. learn Spanish because it's going to be one of the most powerful tools for you. And I'm 58 years old. The day you saw me, it was my birthday, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, well, I am willing to give my life and my efforts for my Mexican or Mexican-American, whatever you want to name it, uh, community. So yeah. please promise me that the next interview is going to be a part in, in Spanish. Sí. Okay. Yeah, you, uh, you know, every you know, like my dad, you know, my dad told me that in the past, too. Um, you know, he's so, my dad's somebody that taught me growing up, you know, to be proud of who you are and proud of your culture, you know, proud to be Raza. And, um, and you know, he's told me, he's told me that too. Like, I got to learn Spanish and I'm trying, you know, I'm trying over there in Mexico. I was trying to talk it, you know, there's just some things that, you know, that I get confused with. Uh, I, I can, I can understand it, but I just, it's just hard for me to speak it sometimes and yeah. the music to everything. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, when you are, 21 years old, your hard drive is, is empty. Mine yeah. is full, and I'm still learning every single day. Uh, I don't know how to speak English. I can tell. I can communicate, but I can tell that I'm a, that I know how to speak English. But at least I'm trying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, at, yeah, least, I can just try. at least you can understand me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, your, 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 your English is good. I, I understand everything you're saying. Well, I appreciate it. Well, uh, social media, Nico, please. Uh, you, can, you can follow my Instagram, uh, all lowercase, Nico Robledo3. Uh, that's uh, my Instagram, and I have a Twitter, uh, Robledo underscore, and then the uh, the Roman numeral number number three. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that, you know, that's it. Chivas America. Chivas, all the way. A huevo. Tacos. Puros, puros chivas. Tacos hamburguesas. Tacos. Pozole o... Go eh, macaron and cheese, ¿cómo se llama? Mac and cheese. Pozole. A huevo. Muchas gracias, Nico. Thank you very much for gracias, your Gracias, Ernesto. Muchas gracias a ti. Muchas gracias.